Okay, good morning everyone uh, and welcome to the BBC Men's Scalability Brigade meeting uh, uh, for March 26, uh, 2020. Uh, we have three items uh, on the list. Uh, I expect the first one to be uh, fairly quick, is just an update on the numbers we are seeing uh, lately. Um, and then we'll, uh, uh, we'll move on with the discussion we had uh, last week about uh, Kafka and the partition. I know Ken has a proposal on how to support uh, multiple adapters with dedicated topics. Um, and then there is an ongoing discussion between Serkant and Ken uh, on how to register uh, multiple adapters with the core and how, how to handle them. Um, I'm going to start quickly uh, with the, the latest numbers. Uh, we set up jobs uh, that runs every four hours with 512 uh, ONUs. Um, the good news is that uh, when we run them with uh, a cluster made up of three instances, uh, we consistently get uh, the job to pass, uh, and it's uh, it's pretty fast. The job is both these jobs are running with uh, uh, eight open and new adapter uh, instances. Uh, I will say that all the numbers are looking uh, pretty stable, uh, so that's good. Uh, one thing that I wanted to point out is that uh, we had the first successful run for 1,024 uh, devices. It took about 135 seconds uh, to complete. Uh, the bad news is that that was the one and only success we had uh, with that build. The other thing uh, that I wanted to point out that is currently under uh, investigation is that the job with 500 uh, OPN is fairly uh, unstable. I could track it down to something uh, something strange happening with Kafka, Kafka meaning that if the job runs uh, after a job that failed, uh, seems that while they're running with partition, there are some messages left around that the adapters then uh, pick up. Uh, we don't see this uh, this issue with a single uh, adapter and a single partition. Uh, so this definitely needs uh, some more investigation. For the time being, uh, I'm thinking to. Uh, change the job so that it removes and installs Kafka uh, as part of the deployment so that the numbers that we see here are not affected by uh, the result of the previous uh, job. The reason I'm saying this is that if we look at these four jobs, uh, 169, 170 run back to back, then a job with 1,024 runs and failed, then 171 runs and took a very long time compared to the other job, and then 172 run immediately after 171, uh, and, and the time went back to what is expected. Uh, so I suspect there is uh, something there that, that remains around. Oh, do you guys have uh, issues hearing me? No, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I saw a message in the chat. Uh, this man was saying it's it's breaking up for him. Yeah, he does break. Yeah, up I mean, is it breaking up for everybody or or just me? For me, also break up from time to time, but it's fairly clear enough to. Sounds a bit like you're in a, Actually, tin, yeah. a tin can. Yeah, I think it's Zoom. I think we're is all this, breaking up. Is this better? Your audio sounds slightly better. I, I haven't been hearing the breakup that other people, I think, are. Okay, I just. Uh, my system was using the microphone in the headphones. Now I'm back to use the one in, in the computer. So, 
Maybe that helps a little bit. Okay, uh, this is everything I wanted to uh, to share about the uh, the numbers. Uh, just to give an overview uh, about the the status. Uh, but since I think that to the next two points will uh, will involve a bigger discussion. Uh, if there are no questions, I'll. Uh, I just just a quick question. So, sorry, yeah. I, I I got here a little bit late. So. Um, so the 1024 is, is still without any um, ONOS apps bringing up service or anything, right? It's just basically discovering and then um, doing that, the That's correct. And that's yeah. All of them are still without ONOS apps. We are, uh, we are working on uh, augmenting the pipeline, but we are not running it uh, in, in this job yet. We run it, uh, we're starting to run it in, uh, in the development job. So hopefully next week we'll, we should have some tests with the ONOS apps. Right, and then this is with the eight um, ONU adapter instances, right? Yeah, correct. So okay. both uh, um, these last three jobs uh, are with the eight Oh, you said a little bit of a break up. But, um, so, so the, the, the 512 still succeeds, okay, it's just when you go to a larger number that now it becomes more variable and sometimes fails, is that? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. So, so if, I, I if suspect add, that that it. Oh, sorry, I was going to say. So, if you add like sixteen or you adapt, does does it behave like five twelve or? Uh, I haven't tried that. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, if you do the the math, uh, thousand twenty four by eight is one hundred twenty eight uh, ONUs per adapter. And if you look uh, <coughs> at the job um, of 128 ONUs, they are all pretty stable. So a single adapter should be. So th these two threads were an error uh, in the pipe. So don't, don't consider them. But apart of those, this job is very stable. So one adapter should be uh, completely capable of handling. Uh, yeah, it may not scale. It may not scale like that, but um, yeah, okay. Understood. Yeah, I, I, so I did the, some some observation is not exactly balanced, uh, but is pretty much around that. So running with 512 new, uh, the news were distributed to the single adapters were always between uh, uh, basically 40 and 70. So the 200 O and U's and 200 milliseconds, that number is still good, right? Yeah. Uh, let me find it. Yeah, this number is, is still good. We had a couple failures two days ago when we broke the pipeline, but that's not related to, to the code itself. Yeah, so in the last couple of days, um, oh, ONU yeah, persistent storage same. was turned back on again. So the some of these more recent runs uh, now include uh, writing storage, uh, ONU adapter storage. Um, which has never worked before, so that's cool. Yeah, that, that's good that, mm, that the numbers have not changed uh, by much. Look, there may be a little increment here, but something in the order of one, two seconds. So. Uh, so far, do we know where the bottleneck is uh, now that we have multiple adapters? Uh, so one thing that I notice uh, while running on a smaller system with um, uh, with a smaller number of new but still multiple adapters is that um, if a request to the core times out, then the adapter is not very good at covering. And the, the device, the new device rem remains marked as not activated. And there is a loop that that starts in the adapter every half a second that keeps retrying the message, and that seems to clog the the opening adapter. But I'm I'm, I'm not entirely sure about that yet. So you're saying that there, there's a request from the ONU adapter into the call that times out, right? Uh, yeah. Is, 
is it always the same uh, set of messages? Uh, and, um, uh, and also, did you try to increase the time out? I, I tried to increase the time out and things seems to work a little better. Um, but there should be a, a uh, in the adapter, if I read the code correctly. Uh, but I'm not really seeing that working too well, but I'll, I, I have to investigate a little more before uh, claiming responsibility on one piece of code or the other. Oh, okay, because I would be curious about that to know, like, uh, because that's not a lot of old news uh, for the code to handle. So if there's a, a timeout, I would like to know if it's uh, something to do with like, uh, the call being really busy or is there something else happening in the call? Uh, I should have a set of blog for, uh, from Aran. I can share them on the mailing list after the meeting. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Mm. Tell also, do you also record um, CPU and memory consumption values? Um, we are recording them uh, in the pipeline. Uh, so and build uh, in the artifacts. Uh, there is a CPU usage file uh, that is an export from Prometheus, um, but it's still very preliminary. We're just collecting uh, the average uh, for the duration of the build uh, for, for each container. So it's, it's not very, uh, very meaningful. If you look, <coughs> if you look during um, well, now it's a uh, it's not bright, but if you look during a build, we have Prometheus deployed, uh, and that will actually show you uh, an image. You have a screenshot. And that gives you a little more information. Let me share this window. Okay, can you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so if you look into Prometheus, uh, you'll get this kind of information so you can get the consumption uh, per pod uh, and you can see how it grows and what happens. Um, it seems like it's a little tricky to explore this kind of information through the API, so we're, we're working to uh, figure out a way to export it and store it and then uh, ideally re-import it in, uh, into Grafana or some other tool to see this kind of graph that is uh, much easier to understand that that's thing adjacent them. Uh, if, if people are interested, I can send out uh, uh, an email on instruction on how to deploy this. It's actually a single command. So if you want to deploy it along with your testing, uh, this will give you uh, a nice insight on what's happening. Yeah, I thought it, it would be good. Yeah, I can try it. Please send me. Yeah, okay. The ONUs look like a very busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, what, what, I, what I see the top outputs, uh, the when new adapters are generally um, consumes 100% CPU, all of the CPU available um, because they're working on like a single core. Um, the open OLT adapter is generally consumes 70% uh, of CPU uh, when, when I try 512 uh, ONUs. And the core is, core seems like 300% or something. Um, but I didn't check what the core is working on, on that phase. Yeah. So 300%? Yeah. <laughs> and that's with the latest build? Uh, y yes, yes, I guess, yeah. Hmm. That's, uh, that's quite odd. Because 300, that's, that's huge. Yes, it's huge, yeah, I know. It's just, just a snapshot in time. So, I mean, certain only new adapters always are always running harder than others. And then there's one down, down the bottom that's hardly running at all, right? 
but so is this like an average or is this a snapshot or, or is that, it's, is that the, the it, it's the peak value now yeah yeah no th this is sampled uh, uh, every minute so it's, it's an average of consumption every minute yeah so uh, maybe, maybe the distribution isn't you know, so even in terms of ONU allocation to the adapters or or maybe just the time part of it when some are really busy, some are not. Yeah, if you, if you wait a little longer, they all go a little up and down. They're not yeah. a, a straight line. Um, but yeah, the, the distribution is not exactly linear. So um, this last open a new probably is entering less devices than Well, this there's one. one even further down, if you look like three up, it's 1.9%, right? Oh, this is the LT. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, I only saw seven adapters. I mean, I'm just not counting, right? Uh, I haven't counted, actually. Oh, no, you're right. You're, say, I'm just having... No, yeah, the, the, yeah, those are eight. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, and also the, this screenshot was taken with a single Kafka instance. Uh, so that may cause a different uh, load between the components. Uh, so that I'll send out instruction to uh, to deploy this dashboard is really a single Helm install command. Um, and I, I'll, I'll try to add to that chart also the dashboard to see ATCD and Kafka consumption because those are other uh, valuable insights. Okay, is there anything else we uh, we need to discuss on this? Because otherwise, I think it's important to move to the next two points that that are the uh, really interesting points for uh, the future. Okay, Ken, do you want to take on uh, and share your proposal? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Ken. Uh, do you need uh, to share the screen? Uh, yes, please. All yours. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So this this proposal is really based on the discussion that we had uh, last week and also based a little bit on self-scant uh, proposal. Uh, pretty much uh, what we want to have is, uh, like you showed uh, earlier, we want to have multiple ONUs. This proposal can work also with multiple OLTs as well. And uh, one of the requirements that we had last week is if an adapter, suppose we have multiple adapters, one of them goes down, then we don't want to load balance across uh, all the other adapters. We want to let it fail, let it restart, and then process those devices. And uh, this, what it means is if there's a request coming in and that adapter goes down and devices was associated with that adapter, it means that those requests will fail. This is what we talked about last week. Uh, uh, I know we talk about uh, Kafka partitioning and everything. So this this proposal, it's really, there's not a lot of changes uh, that will happen in the sense of Kafka will remain as is. What we're going to do is so we're going to put some change in the Volta library and uh, so that the core can reuse, we'll call an API and then the, the OLT adapter can call the same APIs uh, to figure out like where to send a request. So it's, uh, it's all based on co consistent hashing. And uh, I'm just going to show a few uh, sequence diagrams to give an idea. So the very first one is, is just shows like adapter registration. Like uh, this is what happened today. Like uh, you can have uh, uh, two instances of the adapter coming in. The only difference now, if we do an, uh, with, with this proposal, is when we send a, an adapter registers, it will send the adapter name, the device types that support, 
it will also send its uh, adapter instance uh, ID, uh, similar to what uh, Setan's proposal, but also it will send the total number of adapters that we, of that type that we expect in deployment. I'll go over that uh, a little bit later, why we need that, uh, that total number. So once they get registered in a call, we save them to the KV store. If you have another instance coming in, we'll register it and save it in the KV store. And now imagine a, a, a command coming in, a request coming in from a Vault CTL says, do some, do some X item. In the call, we'll do exactly what we do today. There's nothing that changed. However, at the time that we want to send, suppose that request is meant to go to an, an adapter, an instance of that adapter, instead of uh, saying, sending it today on that adapter topic, because currently we have only one adapters. So in, in the case of multiple adapters, they would all have the same adapter name. They, so the device type would all, always be the same. So what we are going to do, we're going to talk to the Volta lib. I'm going to go over the sequence in the Volta lib later on. But basically it will go to the Volta lib. It says, give me a topic associated with that adapter. Basically it will just give the device, all it has at that time is a device ID and a device type. And in the lib, we're going to use a constant hashing to map that device ID to a specific instance of the adapter. So then it will come back, in this case, for example, it says the topic is that adapter one, like an, an example, it says, this is where you need to send it. Then the command X, at the time it's going to send it out, it will set the topic to adapter one and send it over Kafka. So this is, uh, today we don't uh, go to the Volta lib. What we do, uh, instead of getting the, to get the topic, we just pretty much use the device type and as a topic, and, uh, and that won't be sufficient if we have multiple adapters. Any questions on this uh, diagram? No? Okay, so I'll, I'll just show, maybe you will have questions after. So let me see. Can you see my screen? Hello? Yeah, we can yes, see your screen. Yeah, we can see it. I can still see the multiple adapter support core uh, image. Uh, do you see a multiple adapter Volta Lib? No. No? That's odd. Uh, I think you were sharing a, a single let me see. Window. Let me share everything here. Maybe that would be. You still see the screen? Uh, now we also see a desert in the background. And we okay. see the support failure thing. Okay, perfect. So let me show the one that uh, I want to show. Okay. So you see the Volta library? The... Yep. Okay. So for this one, so they, Everything is really in that library, the change in that. So basically like earlier in the previous uh, sequence diagram, we said, okay, we're, we're going to get a, we're going to ask a library to give me the topic associated with the device ID and device type. So the library, what it does, it get the adapter name. It need to get the adapter name based on the device type. How it does that? So it need to look at the cache in memory. Suppose this, uh, Remember those Volta lib reside in each component. So the component may have died and come back. It may not have something in this cache. Or 
that adapter was not uh, registered before. So if the adapter is there, so it, it, it can figure out the adapter name, then does nothing. Otherwise, it goes to the KV store and load the adapters in memory and the device type. It build a constant hash ring for that adapter in the sense of if you have uh, 10 adapters of the same instance, then it will have 10 nodes on that ring with the replicas and whatever is uh, required for constant fashion. So it will build that. And then once that's done, then we'll get the adapter instance map for that device ID. So this device ID like will be corresponding to only one of those uh, adapter instance. It will return that and that will be the adapter instance like knowing that adapter instance so we'll know its unique topic this is what gets back to the component and this is what it's going to use to send a request over kafka to the far end so there's a bunch of assumptions here one is each adapter instance needs to have its own topic so during registration they will need to have its own topic. Typically, typically it could be the device type uh, and the score, the instance ID, for example. example. Uh, we need to know the maximum instances of a given adapter and deployment. The reason why we need that is at the time that we're building the hash, uh, the constant hash ring, we don't want to come later and add uh, instances to it. Because if we do that, then suddenly we're going to rebalance things. And the requirement was we don't want any rebalancing happening. So we need to get at the get go, know how many of those we have. So we have a ring that is, doesn't change. And uh, another that, one is- that, uh, that may not be knowable though, right? I mean, how do you know that? It's something we'll have to configure. It, it has to be part of the configuration. Yeah, but that's, so, I mean, that's very dynamic, right? I mean, that, that's the thing. If we want something dynamic, then what will happen? Chances are there will be rebalancing happening with this, and and we don't want rebalancing. If something fails, uh, will uh, the requirement was to let it fail, and when it's come back up, we are going to to uh, process those requests. Yeah, I think that the base assumption here is that mm, being the the stricter uh, requirements uh, on the physical layer, uh, it's fairly easy to know how many adapters you need to manage a deployment. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and, and this number, it could also be discovered in the KV store because the core stores them. The only problem is uh, we don't know at what time we are actually building that, uh, that hash uh, ring. So if we're building the hash ring while not everything has been stored in the KV store, then we'll get to the same problem of not knowing, uh, of, of having to rebalance after that. So that's, that's, that's a caveat there. And uh, obviously if, uh, if an adapter is down, then devices will not be load balanced. And request to adapters that has failed will time out and uh, meaning those device IDs, those devices will not get any requests until that adapter comes back up. And uh, just one small thing on constant, ha uh, the constant map, uh, every adapter will, will have uh, a set of devices and with constant uh, hashing, uh, you don't get an exact uh, distribution. So it's, uh, it's a percentage. Of, uh, of spread out and uh, obviously the the hash per se can can be tuned and uh, to get a better distribution but it, but typically don't expect it to be like uh, equal like for example you can get uh, for 1000 devices and five adapters you can get a distribution of like one of them 222 support 122 and then with at least one supporting 169 so it will be something like that and then one, uh, the last part is, this is more like from an EPS perspective. In some cases, we want to know if a device is owned by an adapter. So we're just going to give it a device ID and the adapter 
the will tell us if it's uh, on or not. Any general comment on this? Yes, actually, can what does this data we are writing in KV storing include? Uh, why do we write something into KV store and query? Uh, writing it is actually it's a read. It's not a really right. Yeah. Yes, but uh, but what what does this data include? What is it? Why do we we have device ID? Uh, mm -hmm. And I think it's it, it's enough for uh, generating a cache. It's a unique ID generating a hash. So why do we go cache or KV store to read something? What data does it include? Okay, so so in the KV store we have a bunch. In order to build a constant hash, we need to we we'll build a, a ring of nodes that correspond to the servers, and the servers in this case are the adapters. So each adapter instance will correspond to a node on that ring for that type. So if you have different types, different adapters, each one of them, uh, different adapters of different types, they will have different rings. So for, for a given type and multiple instances, uh, you need to build that ring. So in order to know that, we need to go to the, to the KV store because if, if a device, uh, if a component just restarted, it has nothing in its memory. So I, I, I think basically you need to know the number of adapters that are available for that particular kind of device. Yeah, and, and, and also like, a, for example, like one of the requests is to get the topic, right? So you need to know uh, not just the number, but also the, the details of that adapter to know like what topic uh, it supports so that I can return. So there's some information there that are required. Okay, but um, so Ken, uh, mm -hmm. if you if you if you know exactly how many uh, adapter instances that are going to be in a deployment, mm -hmm. and you know uh, the number of ONU devices are capped at some some number, what if you just round robin them through the adapters, right? I mean, um, uh, just just assign them as they come. Um, and keep a map in memory, back it up in KV store, and that's it. I mean, yeah, but uh, once you go down, once a component goes down, you need to still to go uh, to the to the KV store and load uh, the latest mapping, and then proceed from there. So th this one is, is there's no uh, that uh, that mapping is done dynamically. It's not even uh, you don't need to have this. Uh, device ID to adapt the mapping uh, required. Yeah, you, you don't need to store the map. No, you don't need the, to the map it. would be generated the same way every time, so you can just cache it and regenerate it when needed. Yeah. And, and when you say adapt to type, so this is an open on you adapter. Like would Yeah, would, an open on you. I mean, yeah, I mean, the different ones. If let's say I have a, I don't know, a Dokia specific one or I trying a specific one. Yeah, the, each one of them uh, will have their different rank. Yeah. Because you're distributing among them. You're not distributing but, like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, it's, it, that might be tough to know up front as to what specific ONUs you might deploy at any given time. And then you have to tune my server to say, okay, I expect you know, I expect a need, you know, four adapters of Atram type and four and three adapters of open on you type and one adapter of, you know, Atram type. I mean, no, they, uh, when you say tuning, what, what uh, in this case, if you make a request and that adapter is, uh, suppose it's an open OLT, right? It discovered a device and that is a, of a different type that has not, is not in its memory. So when it's going to send a request, it will go into the Volta li library and says, okay, give me the, the topic for that type. At that moment, the, the library would say, oh, do I have it in memory or not for that type? It says, no, okay, I'm going to go to the KV store and load that data. And, and hopefully you have that data in KV store. 
So for, for each type, you will need to, with this approach, you will need to know how many of those you're going to support. But uh, you can add them as you go. You don't have to, uh, to pre-provision them in a way. And again, this is, this is not to, to prevent have, having to do load balancing and redistribution of devices. And this approach will work like the core can use it, open OLT also can use it. And you could also have uh, multiple open OLTs over there with this approach. Oh, so, so sorry, so maybe I'm misinterpreting. So, so you say load the adapter. Uh, I was thinking that was going to be a specific um, ONU type adapter. Are you saying it's an OLT type adapter or? No, this approach support both, both, but in the case both. of uh, of uh, ONU, it will, if there's a request coming in for a specific ONU and uh, it's not in the, in the memory, so then you will have to go to the KV store and load uh, the adapters associated with that uh, device type. And then build the ring for that. Yeah, it's... Seems a, uh, seems a little bit complicated, I guess. But yeah, I, mean, I, I understand the problem. It's a but what I was trying to do is the, to limit the changes in one place in the library so that uh, the mechanism of getting the topic, if later on we want to change that mechanism, and all we have to do is, is really change something in the library, or it could be somewhere else. But, but just limit it to one place. I think William implemented a similar approach, but um, I think he tried to put the uh, topic name on into the into each message that the ONU adapter sends, so that uh, for the responses, uh, when when adapt uh, open OLT adapter or RV core want to send a response to open ONU adapter, uh, it didn't need to uh, get the topic name. It just know from the request the topic name and uh, send a response back to the ONU adapter. Yeah, and, and this, is, this still applies today because we still do that for a request response. When we get a request, the request will tell us reply on a specific topic. And then obviously we're going to reply on that topic. This is a message. This is when we, you're going to send a request. And you don't know which topic you have to send it to. Oh, I'm sorry. He, he, he put the uh, partition ID. I'm sorry. Yeah. He put the partition ID and send it, send back to the responses to that partition ID. Oh, okay. And there's a, another one here. That if we look at the case of a, just going briefly over this case of a, suppose you have a device that get restarted and an adapter that get restarted. On the restart, assume all the device adapters have been registered. And in this case, let's say the instance number two of that adapter uh, is restarted. After a restart, it will send a registration message to the core. It goes to the Kafka, eventually it goes to the core. What does the core do? The, the core look, uh, it finds that this adapter with this instance number was already registered. And it, so it needs to reconcile. So what it does, it gets a list of all devices uh, from that adapter. So at this time, when you look at the devices, it doesn't know which instances belong to. It will just get the list of all adapters and all devices from that adapter type. And then what it does, it builds a list of devices that it needs to reconcile. So talk to the library, tell the library, does this device belong to that uh, adapter that has been 
restarted. So pretty much that uh, adapter has been restarted, has an adapter name and an instance ID. So it's going to say, yes, it belongs or not. If it's true, we're going to say, okay, this is part of the device that needs to be reconciled. So that after that, when the course send a reconciliation list to Kafka, it's targeted only for adapter number two in this case. All the other adapters won't get a reconcile message. It's only the one that got restarted will get the reconcile message. I think both approaches will work, um, but I think we try to understand the Kafka's internal mechanism. So right now we are talking about only one OLT. So if the core um, will only support one OLT as the current design suggests, then having a few topics or having few uh, partitions is probably not, not a problem for Kafka. But if we decide that one, um, one Walter core will support more than one OLT, then we need to figure out that uh, if, the, if having uh, thousands of partitions will be good for Kafka or thousands of topics will be good for, uh, for Kafka. We, we need to figure out that. Um, just for future. But thousands is a stretch, right? I mean, yeah. we're talking tens. Exactly. Um, right now, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. Even if you put a second OLT, the 10 becomes 20. Right? I don't. And this is all guesswork, but I don't think we're going to put like 10 OLTs onto the same Volta stack. I mean, it's like, a, well, we'll have, see. If you have two OLTs, that will be two topics for the OLT. The number of ONUs, the topic for ONUs remain as is. Like, however, it's a map to number of uh, ONU adapters. Yeah. So they are, they are distinct. So, so I haven't participated in this brigade. A long time, but when I think future and scale of um, Volta, I've actually been thinking kind of going the other way in terms of core to OLT relationship, where you have a kind of what I'll call mini core, a OLT adapter, or yeah, an OLT adapter, and then an ONU adapter per ONU type in a Kubernetes pod, and that represents one OLT and the support of that one OLT. So if you would have 10 OLTs, you would have 10 of these pods. Um, and then you would scale up and have kind of that aggregation capability above that. But that way you kind of simplify the overall implementation, kind of what we've done a little bit today. Um, but I think a little, a little bit more simplification. And you, you then, I think it changes how you can look at some of these HA questions and scale questions. And it might work better for us in the long run. So my, my thought experiment. So this is that Volta simpler thing that we had done, right? Last last November. It's, it, it's building on that, yes. When we said we have separate Volta stacks for each OLT. But once you put everything in a pod, right, for a single OLT, then you also get um, communication simplifications that you can build on that might be beneficial as well. So it's kind of building on that idea and going, taking, trying to take it a little further. And so in terms yeah. of scaling out in the future, that might be an approach we want to take as opposed to say, how can we bundle more and more um, HA, well not HA or load balancing within a single core. Cool, but then, Kevin, that, that's great if your uh, open on you and open on the adapter can support the same number of devices. So you have one open you adapter for one OLT adapter uh, and, and then you can stick them together in a pod and say, these two guys are going to manage this device. If you need a to a new adapter for one OLT, then it gets a little trickier. If you need more than one ONU adapter, um, and, and if, if we take this further, once we implement the ONU adapter and go, and I know that's a ways down the line, if we still need more than one ONU adapter to support all the ONUs in an OLT, then there needs to be a mechanism to do that, whether it's this mechanism or similar mechanism. But I think there's, um, 
ways to look at that too. Uh, in terms of how do you load balance that, but you may take that same simplification model and put it down, much like I think Ken's talked about, saying, look, I've assigned these um, ONUs to this ONU adapter. If it fails, it'll restart and pick those up again, as long as we can find a way that if the control plane restarts, it doesn't affect the data plane. I think that might be okay. Um, I don't know, just something to think there. I, again, it becomes an issue of, are we going to need multiple ONU adapters down the road or not? And where do we build that in? At some point, I posted this question in the chat. Um, if we're doing one-to-one -one communication between a core and an adapter, um, or an adapter and adapter, then uh, Kafka, we're not using Kafka for any purpose at all then really. Uh, when Kafka was originally brought in, it was to help with load balancing. So that you, know, you send a message on Kafka and someone handles it, you don't care who. But if we're essentially bringing, you know, scoping this down to one-to-one -one communication, then we shouldn't be using Kafka. It's the wrong model. We should be looking for gRPC. And I don't know if that needs to be bundled in these proposals or not. Yeah, that's a, go ahead. I agree with you there, there David. Like it's, uh, uh, the only re requirement that uh, we had uh, was to get uh, something uh, for the next uh, release, and I don't think uh, we'll go to gRPC for that. I think there's way too much changes on that. And, uh, but the requirement was we need to support multiple ONU adapters. Um, looking at the, obviously if we go to, if we move to Go, uh, chances are we'll be able to support more. Uh, but looking at the performance of it and the amount of, uh, of uh, CPU and memory that's taking, I, I, I doubt uh, that we'll be able to support one one. It's, it's, it's yet to be tested. Yep. One, one of the approach uh, that, uh, that uh, in, in this model that I have is like, even if you have one uh, adapter of a certain type, we can still use that approach the library would just return the same uh, topic. It won't, uh, it won't make any difference. It's just like moving the decision to figure out which topic to send a request goes in one common place instead of uh, the open OLT figure it how to do it or the core figure out how to do it. I think, I think that will work out fine if you only have one ONU adapter type, right? It's when, if, if, if at some point you now need to support multiple, then it becomes a little more complicated in terms of knowing how many of that, those physical ONUs you have, or so how many ONU adapters of that type you need. Do you think right that's now, a realistic the concern? The type isn't so much of an issue because, I mean, one adapter instance currently can, from a code point of view, process all the types. It's really just a matter of distributing the five or six types you may have across the eight ONU adapter instances, right? You know, practically speaking, we may have thousands of one type and then maybe hundreds of another type. But from the adapter itself's point of view, it's, it'll, it'll process either type just fine. I, I got confused about that. If if an adapter yeah. is is supports a device type, an, um, an adapter supports multiple device types. That's I think that's the kind of thing here that's somewhat unique about the ONU adapter is currently it it is set up based on its advertising to support I think eight different ONU types now, um, and that support is really just made possible by the fact that they all speak a common language ONCI. Um, so partitioning based on type or hashing based on type, I mean, it really doesn't change anything. It's really just, okay, you know, you're a, you're a, a Broadcom ONU or you're an Alpha ONU, you're a Nokia ONU. You know, the ONU adapter that processes you is the same code, whether it's instance one or instance two. Is it started different, configured different, or is it exactly the same code run the, run the same way? Currently, it is all exactly the same code. Much work has went into making sure the library 
will work with many different adapt uh, ONU types. And part of the, the, the design idea with OpenOMCI and OpenONU is that we don't have to have a different adaptive type for different um, models. Right. You could have the one that will serve them all. Right. And so, so, so far, it's worked out pretty well. So, so, yeah, so, so the open, only open, reason, go ahead. Yeah. I said, as I was saying, the, the type that we're talking about here, though, is it's either open ONU adapter or some other open ONU adapter, right? So I mean, right now there's only the one open ONU adapter. Okay. So, so if, if everything, it, yeah, so if everything can be handled by the open ONU adapter, then there, there is no open ONU adapter type. It's just one open ONU yeah. adapter and, and, and the it, issue yeah. didn't come up, right? Yeah. The only reason you'd but, partition but I mean, within the ONU the adapter cover, space would be if, if one, uh, one, one branch of that is somehow uses more CPU than another, right? For some, one of the vendors uses more CPU than another. And so I want to allocate those vendors to a, their own ONU type so it doesn't slow things down or whatever, right? Right. That would be the only Except reason. Except you would, you would probably want to spread those around. Uh, or, or say I've got these five ONU adapters to manage this vendor's device because I know it's a pain in the neck. And I've got sure, the one, could, yeah. You could just as soon make that same decision criteria based on operator workflow, right? Yeah, you know, I, I uh, think, One operator yeah. may say, I need 50 OMCI flows. Another operator may say it needs 20. You know, you could, you know, chop it up that way too. And they may all, all the operators may end up using a similar ONU type. Um, I mean, yeah, so it's like pick, pick but, which but I, flavor yeah. of, of where you want to break it up. I think it becomes a policy of how you, you um, allocate out ONUs to adapters, right? It's going to be like yeah. I mean, I, initial, I would the initial one holding off that kind of yeah. optimization. Yep. I agree. I it, it's too early, early for that. I agree. I think, you know, as Rob mentioned, do a, you know, do a round robin initial layout once once the mm -hmm. ONU is assigned to an adapter it, it lives there until there's some administration uh, operation to do a manual load balance or something or a manual shift and then if if an ONU adapter goes down it goes down and restarts and gets those same devices and then focus on not affecting the data plane I'd also say new types are also a pretty rare thing, relatively rare for an operator network. I'd imagine you'd have thousands upon thousands of the same type deployed. And then, you know, maybe for DPUs, you might have tens or hundreds of another type, but yeah. you won't have new types coming and going, you know, daily, certainly. It, it would be like a, a new product rollout kind of uh, situation. Yeah. Right. Six maybe months of testing in the lab. Rev, rev levels. <laughs> and stuff like that but really for at t you're going to have a business type and a consumer type right there'll be like three or four yeah and, but they could all be handled by potentially be handled by the same ONU open ONU adapter right it's just if there is sure right. well that's the, that's different, the design goal yeah different yep. resource that's, or and, loading uses that you know may affect something yep. that's more subtle I mean yeah, I mean, the, the idea right now is it's somewhat like the open OLT. It's just really now about how you code your workflow. As long as the adapter is set up so that it can be told to kick off different tasks to perform different actions, depending on how the open flow decomposition works out, then the adapter will just, you know, say, okay, you want transparent VLANs or you want, you know, P bits this or you want different queuing strategies. I mean, right now for the three operators for the eight ONUs, you know, generally speaking, so far, it's held up that it's been able to to do what it needs to do for all of them. Um, you know, of course, improvements need to be made for different situations. But again, you know, the common factor is OMCI, right? As long as OMCI works for ONUs, then open ONU using open OMCI should work for ONUs. So, okay. Um, so, Last time we were saying, we were debating between two different approaches. Uh, one to stay with uh, the assignment and another to rebalance. And Ken, what he's talked about is like the first option, the simpler option that I was aiming for, but a few of you wanted to explore the, uh, the balancing option as well. Any uh, thoughts or results from that one? Yeah, I, 
I would agree with you. I'd keep it simple. And if we need to make it, make it more complex down the road, we make it more complex. Okay, but Theo, you wanted to explore it or somebody else wanted to explore I, the I other option, really, the balancing? So yeah. I didn't really want to explore the rebalancing. I, I wanted to explore if there was a way to, uh, to be static using the, the partitions. Because I, I think everyone agrees that being static for now is the way to go because it's the simpler way and we don't have that much time. Uh, but I don't know, somewhat I felt that if we could stick with the partition, that would leave the door open for, for the future to be more flexible. But the, this proposal from Ken seems, uh, seems simple enough to me that we can go with it. And I, and I don't think Ken's proposal um, eliminates a, a load balancing, right? I just think it might be, at least in the first iteration, if we want to support it, it might be a manual operation, i.e. push a button, kind of like Onos, right? Read load balance against the masters yeah, or the cluster. Exactly. Yeah, the, the whole point here is that we need to move that uh, decisions on where to send a request into the library. And if later on we want to change it, change the algorithm, the process and whatever, we have one place to, to do that. And the same exact same thing will be used in both the core and the open OLT adapter. Yeah, I, th I think that we talked about maybe a, a, a couple of phase approach where phase one would be, it would be fixed and then later on we could maybe explore if we need to, um, you know, having different ad uh, adapters handle different physical devices on failure. Um, but, but yeah, let's do it. As I say, to your point about keeping the algorithm in the library, I agree 100%. Well, and that helps in our adapter messaging too, which has kind of been the other part of this when ONU and OLT adapters need to talk to each other. Um, so this helps that too. So in, in parallel, um, I'm working on um, understand, understanding the Williams old pass. So it seems that what he did in open, open ONU adapter can be reusable. Like um, he did um, static partition assignments um, in the open ONU adapter by giving a partition ID. Um, so at the startup, open ONU uh, just tried to uh, register its consumers to, to, a, not, to a, a statically assigned partition and open OLT adapter and the core um, by using the hash partitioner can uh, load balance to the different partitions that we created at the startup. Um, I finished the coding of it, uh, but I wasn't able to um, test it. Um, if I if I able to um, solve the problem, I, I I can update you. I guess. Yeah, so I guess when you when you publish something on a topic, you can specify the partition you want to publish it on. Uh, so that that may be an approach that is midway between the two. Because at, at that yes, point, exactly. you have a you have a static mapping using the partition instead of multiple topics. Yes, exactly. So I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to touch the uh, core and open OLT adapter uh, code bases. So the only thing we need to do is uh, just changing the algorithms in the Sarama client, just use the hash partitioner and use the device ID as a key to load balance between partitions. The only change I'm trying to do is assigning, uh, pinning, pinning the open or new adapters to static partitions. So that rebalancing will not uh, occur. Even if the consumer goes down, right? Part of the uh, question about the partitioning and the static partitioning is if the consumer goes away, you know, is there a way to prevent that rebalancing from forcing 200 devices to reconcile one way and then five seconds reconcile back the other way? Um, I mean, that's really the, the crux of the issue is 
just keeping keeping things pinned where they are, even if the consumer goes away for a couple seconds. Yeah, I, I think I think if we try to do an automatic load balance, we're, we're over optimizing from the start. We don't even know if we need it, to be honest. If the control pl if the control plane bounces because of a container, and everything comes back up pretty quickly, um, I, I think that's a better model to, to track to until that doesn't work. Again, assuming the data plane is consistent. Yeah. I think, I think we decided on that in the last meeting that uh, if we don't rebalance the partitions when the open when you adapt to restarts, it gets the uh, reconciled all devices. Right, but okay, so I'm a little confused. So if, if you're going down that path, I thought we said having separate topics for each adapter um, is better than having one topic with multiple partitions and trying to figure out how the partitions can be static. Am I not right? I thought what Ken was talking about was the multiple topics. Or, yeah, that's or a multiple topic. topic. Per adapter, right. Yeah, yeah. But Sarkant, you're saying that you're still trying to stay with one topic and multiple partitions and somehow keep the partition static for the yes. adapter? Yes, yes, I said. And the benefit of doing that as opposed to going to multiple topics is, is what? Um, that we basically don't need to write any new code. Yeah, I see. Um, it's, I don't know. I think it's uh, just a matter of time. Board approaches will definitely work, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Um, um, and I, I don't see the uh, any advantage uh, between them, which is better. I don't know. I'm not sure. Like a, with this approach, like uh, the one that I propose, like for example, if it ad a adapted adapter goes down and come back up, so it gets only the set of devices that it needs to reconcile, and all the other devices, all the other adapters are left alone. But in the approach where you have only one topic, then all the adapters get the list of all the devices to reconcile. And that's where it's uh, tricky when this adapter just got restarted. How does it know which one it needs to reconcile while and the other one of adapters, which one they, they need to ignore? That's why it's, it was tricky. Yes, because core doesn't know which or a new adapter has the device, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there was, there's no no mapping uh, in the core between the adapter itself uh, instance and a device ID. So, so yeah. for that approach to work, you still need to have code change to have that kind of mapping in place. Yeah, but when you adapter, the restarted when you adapter will only get the uh, device ID, device IDs that uh, uh, before the restarts, it deals, it deals. Um, but other when you adapters will get the reconciled message also, yeah. And all new adapter is essentially a worker that has to contact the core and say, who am I responsible for? And the core has to be the authority. Yep. So basically we can summarize that the difference between the two approaches is that in Ken's case, so in the multiple topic case, the core knows how to associate devices with an adapter uh, while uh, if we go the Kafka partition way, that knowledge is embedded within Kafka. And that is not good for us. Especially if at some point we plan to replace Kafka with gRPC, then that would mean that would have to completely change. Makes sense.
Okay, so but we do need to make a call on one of the approaches. So, uh, the reason why I'm saying that, you know, uh, keep it simple and uh, pushing for, you know, a decision so we can go down that path um, is that, you know, uh, the surge has come to an end, right? The, the first six, this six month surge. And uh, well, we made great progress, but we didn't meet everything. Um, and so in the next three months, we need to meet the requirements of the, of the first surge. So uh, scale was one of those things. Testing is a lot, is, is, is a huge deal. And so the longer we take to make a decision, the longer any code change um, for it. And then now we're going down this multiple adapter path, there's actually more things to test. Um, so you know, let's make a call. Let's start moving forward. Uh, I mean, yeah, Ken's proposal sounds good uh, to me. It seems like it would work well for future proofing changes in terms of Kafka, no Kafka, multiple adapters, different adapters. Uh, yeah, having that knowledge locked away in the library um, to me is a better way to go. It might be more code work in the library and in the core, but it puts us in a better spot. I concur. Works for me. Sir, can't I, you, do you have counter arguments or? Um, no, actually, I don't have any arguments to discuss. Okay, then, I think we've made a call then. Um, let's go with uh, the proposal from last week and this week. And uh, um, so very soon we are going to close uh, Volta 2.3, start up Jira for Volta 2.4, start making stories. But current view right now from making stories uh, based on uh, what we have discussed, marking it as future. Eventually it'll be moved into 2.4 within the next couple of weeks. Um, so can any responsibility for creating these stories based on what we've talked about? Uh, I can take that on and create the, the stories. Uh, can, can you please share this diagram via the mailing list or Slack? Uh, yes, is, uh, is, uh, is there a place where I can uh, upload it uh, on, on Google oh, yeah. somewhere? Yeah, there is a Google Drive folder for the scalability brigade that can send you the pointer. But yeah, maybe I, I put it there. So this yeah. way, like people can also put comments uh, mm -hmm. over there as well. Okay, since we are 10 minutes after the, the hour and we got to an agreement, uh, I think we can call it done for today. Is there anything else we need to discuss? I thought you had something else on the agenda uh, from Sarkar. Well, the oh, other thing on the agenda just was the adapter now? registration, but was kind of embedded mm -hmm. in the same discussion. Okay. Great. Okay, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, talk to you soon on Slack or emails. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Bye. Goodbye, yeah. everyone. Bye bye. Okay, bye. 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 Thank you, Matthew.